So if you are watching this, then most likely you or somebody that you care about is an athlete aspiring to be at a level greater than the one they are currently at. Uh, if you will watch this video for the next several minutes, then I'm going to outline for you exactly how we assess and create athletes from very young all the way up to the professional level. Uh, before I get into the training methodologies though, it is of vital importance that you know exactly where the athlete fits into what is known as the performance pyramid. Okay, so now here's the thing about the performance pyramid is that each layer should build upon the previous layer to make the most elite athlete possible. Now the bottom layer of the pyramid is what we'll call functional movement, okay? so. Put F M functional movement. Now functional movement is made up of two things. It's made up of mobility and it's made up of stability. Mobility very simply is the athlete's ability to go through a certain range of motion. Uh, for example, if an athlete lacks proper ankle mobility, when the athlete squats, a lot of times we'll see maybe the heels will come up because the ankle isn't mobile enough or we'll see that to get down they'll have to shoot the butt way back and kind of fall forward to squat instead of just being able to perform a, a proper squat. Uh, and the other thing that makes up functional movement is stability. Now stability is the ability to maintain proper posture through that range of motion. For example, a lot of times we'll see kids that have problems uh, maintaining knee stability when they're lunging or we'll see knee instability in a lot of, say, female soccer players uh, when they change direction, where the knee does not have the proper angle when they're cutting off. So functional movement, uh, the bottom base of the pyramid, mobility and stability. All right, so now I am certified in a system called the functional movement screen, uh, which may not look like much to the naked eye, but it speaks volumes about an athlete's mobility and stability or their functional movement. Uh, what it is is seven foundational patterns that tell us which qualities the athlete has or doesn't have. And then what we do is we take that data, we interpret it, and we use it when we design the athletic training program. If you get nothing else from meeting me at all, come in and I will screen any athlete for free. It is absolutely worth its weight in gold to see the way your body can or cannot move through these functional patterns. Okay, so now the next block in our performance pyramid that we're building on our foundation of functional movement is functional performance. So we'll draw this block here. Again, I'll abbreviate FP, functional performance. What functional performance is very simply is does the athlete have sufficient power to be effective at their particular sport. Now whenever I say power, the football guys always get very excited because they hit people so they think that applies to them and the soccer, player, the soccer player maybe doesn't think it's as applicable. This is not the case. Power is simply just strength plus speed together. So anytime you run, jump, cut, dive, swing, punch, kick, anything of the athletic sort like that, it's power that makes you good at it. Very simply, the faster you apply more force into the ground, the faster you go. That's power. We have several diagnostics that we use here, just a few that we use frequently, uh, and it does depend on the athlete's sport, but we like the 10 yard dash, we like the vertical jump, and we like the 20 yard shuttle. We feel, we feel that those three diagnostic tools give us a pretty good sense of where the athlete is at as far as their power generation. All right. And the last layer on our performance pyramid is what we call functional skill. Okay, so again, functional skill. Does the athlete have the ability to sink a putt or a free throw or hit a baseball? These are your more sport specific activities. So this is our performance period. Functional movement, functional performance, functional skill. What's critical to note is, is that the athlete that by far has the greatest potential while at the same time having the lowest risk for injury is the one who's perform whose pyramid looks like this. They've got the solid foundation that it builds upon, almost having these little 
buffer zones as you go up for the athlete to build upon as they continue to train. I hope that makes sense so far. Okay, cool. So now you see the lens that we view the athlete through. Here are the components of building the efficient and effective athlete. Uh, the first one uh, is pillar or core strengthening. A lot of people use the word core, so I'll use the word core so you know what I'm speaking about. We like to call it pillar here. Um, the importance of the core cannot be understated. Uh, you'll see certain athletes run where the arms and legs should move around the core. The core should not move around the arms and legs. So if the pillar or the core is not stable, then energy is literally leaking out of the body as they're moving. So it will slow you down or it will injure you. So we put a high, fem high focus on our core stability and strengthening training here. Uh, the next phase of our program that we go right into is our movement preparation portion of the program. Uh, we do not like the term warm-up or even dynamic warm-up because what we do is so much more than that. Uh, have you ever been able to be out in the field or be out in the court and you're playing your sport and you just felt that extra surge of being alert, you felt faster, you felt more on point, um, you were just on that day. Well, what we do is we...